Hello everyone, back again with movie and tune recap. Today, I'm going to explain an American supernatural horror film from 2021, titled The Manor. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. The movie begins with a family celebration for Judith Albright, an old widowed woman, celebrating her 70th birthday with her daughter, Barbara and grandson, Josh. During the party, Judith, a former professional dancer suffers a stroke and is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Not wanting to burden her family, she decides to move into an old-age nursing home called Golden Sun Manor. At the manor, Judith meets the director, Ms. Benson, and the suspiciously strict nurses, Elizabeth and Gary. Judith's 17-year-old grandson Josh, whom she is very close to, visits her weekly, though, he opposes Judith's move, but Barbara convinces him that it is for the best, and it's revealed that Josh has lost his father. Judith also meets a kind nurse named Liesel, who helps her settle into her new environment. Liesel decides to show Judith around the manor, where she notices a dead crow with its head removed, and also an escape path. Liesel shows Judith a forest clearing around an old oak tree, where Judith finds a picture in a burnt site. When Judith asks about the picture, Liesel quickly takes it away, claiming she doesn't know who it is. In the nursing home, the elderly patients are not allowed to use their phones, and nurse Elizabeth takes Judith's phone away from her. Judith meets her Alzheimer's afflicted roommate, Annette, who appears very paranoid about something. During breakfast, Judith notice another patient, Imogen, looking at her with fear, seemingly trying to warn her about something. That night, Judith hears Imogen screaming, telling the nurse she wants to go home, and urging Judith to leave, but she dismisses it. Judith becomes friends with a trio of lively residents, Ruth, Trish, and Roland. Unlike the other patients, this trio seems to be living healthy and strong. They invite Judith to play bridge with them, and they quickly form a close bond. One night, Judith sees the paranoid Annette being forcibly taken to her room by the three nurses and she is restrained on her bed. Annette, holding her Bible, tells Judith that something is watching as they sleep but Judith doesn't understand. After giving Annette her medication to calm her down, Liesel puts Judith to bed, and a call bell is seen beside her bed in case of emergency. In the middle of the night, Judith walks to the oak tree and when she touches the tree bark, her hand starts transforming but it turns out to be a dream. She then hears faint noises from Annette's side of the room, and when she investigates, Judith sees a dark shadowy figure standing over Annette, which frightens her and she calls for help. Elizabeth checks Annette's room but finds nothing resembling what Judith described, and suggests Judith might have had a nightmare. The next morning, as Judith prepares to brush her hair, she notices her hairbrush is missing. When Judith complains to Elizabeth about her missing property, Elizabeth offers to help find it. However, Elizabeth discreetly takes the hairbrush from her own pocket and gives it to Judith, indicating she was the one who took it. That night, Judith is awakened by strange noises and sees the shadowy figure on her bed, which frightens her. She calls for help, but Elizabeth again dismisses her claim, saying it's just another nightmare, and this frustrates Judith. After Elizabeth leaves, Judith visits Annette, who is awake and paranoid, and she notices Annette's crucifix is missing. The next morning during breakfast, Judith accuses Gary of scaring her every night and taking Annette's crucifix. However, Roland intervenes and drags her away, trying to convince Judith that her visions might be a sign of dementia. He, along with the others, warns her to stop acting crazy in front of the nurses, or they will treat her in a way she won't like. That night, as Judith is getting ready for bed, she is startled by Roland and notice a symbol branded on his chest. Roland, thinking Judith might be interested in him, tries to make a romantic advance, but she refuses and Roland makes her promise not to tell anyone before leaving. In the middle of the night, Judith is awakened by strange noises and notices the shadowy figure crawling on the ceiling, and before she can ring the call bell, the figure grabs her hand. After complaining about recurring encounters with the shadowy figure, Dr. Gogan diagnosed Judith with dementia. The doctor runs various tests and a brain scan to check Judith's mental status but doesn't share the results with her. Barbara and Josh are invited over, and the doctor assures Barbara that Judith's wild claims are merely delusions and that living at the manor will be good for her. Josh, who previously appealed to his mother to bring Judith back home, begins to believe his grandmother may be losing her mind. 
On a separate occasion, Josh visits Judith at the manor, and while waiting for her, he is startled by Imogen, who tells him to help her before being taken away by a nurse. During a conversation with Josh, Judith tells him how the manor is making her feel sick and suspects something supernatural is happening. She asks Josh if he can pick her up on Sunday for a movie or lunch, but Josh refuses, insisting she stay at the manor. When Judith mentions how the nurses restrict her movement and won't give her the door code, Josh discreetly writes the code on her arm before leaving. During dinner, Trish talks about how Annette is not doing well and suddenly a black cat approach Annette, which scared her. Ruth explains that the black cat can sense when someone is about to die, implying that Annette's end is near. That night, as Judith prepares for bed, she is startled by Annette, who hands her a piece of paper. Annette tells Judith they are marked, and she needs to find it, before collapsing and die. After Annette's body is taken away, Judith opens the note, which contained the recent deaths of other residents, with Imogen and then Judith listed next. Remembering Annette's words, Judith searches the room and finds a voodoo element hidden under Annette's bed and also under her bed. Judith doesn't waste a moment and escapes the facility using the code given to her by Josh. On her way out, Judith sees some young teenagers who resemble Ruth, Trish, and Roland. However, at the moment she fails to understand the uncanny resemblance and makes her escape through the opening. The next morning, after Liesel reports her missing, Barbara and Josh track down Judith and take her to a diner while waiting for the nurses to pick her up. Judith gives Annette's list to Josh and asks for help to avoid being taken back to the manor, trying to explain the suspicious activities there. When Barbara joins them, Judith excuses herself and notice a 40-year-old photograph on the diner's wall. She tries to inform Barbara and Josh about the dangers, but the nurses arrive and take her away. Back at the manor, Judith sneaks into the director's office to investigate further. From patient and staff records, she learns that Roland is related to Ms. Benson, Ruth is related to Elizabeth, and Trish is related to Gary. Judith also discovers that everyone's medical records contain the same doctored brain scan supposedly identifying dementia. She leaves a voicemail for Josh and is nearly caught by Ms. Benson but managed to hide and escape the office. That night, Josh visits Judith, and she tells him about her discoveries, including that Roland is somehow responsible for the deaths of other patients. Judith tries to show him the brain scan results but discovers they are missing, and despite her pleas for Josh to trust her, he finds her story difficult to believe, and thinks his grandmother is becoming paranoid and losing touch with reality. On his way out of the manor, Josh sees Elizabeth pushing Imogen's body on a gurney and hastily leaves. Meanwhile, Liesel and Gary restrain Judith to her bed when she becomes belligerent. After Gary leaves the room, Liesel privately whispers to Judith that she believes something strange is going on at the facility but that she'll have to talk to Judith about it later because she is being watched. Once alone, the shadowy figure that looks like a bark monster appears in Judith's room and crawls on her before reaching out to her face. The next morning, Judith is awakened by Elizabeth and is surprised to hear that Liesel is on sick leave. Meanwhile, Josh put together the clues Judith gave him and heads to the diner to look at the picture she mentioned. To his shock, it's a 40-year-old photograph showing Roland, Ruth, and Trish looking exactly the same as they do now. He also notices a Celtic sigil representing an oak tree engraved on Trish's arm. Back at the manor, a black cat enters Judith's room, signaling that she may die soon, and she begins to weep. Distraught over her questionable sanity, Judith considers overdosing on pills, but Josh interrupts to share his findings. He explains that the Celtic symbol branded on Roland, Ruth, and Trish represents longevity and regeneration related to the oak tree. Josh agrees that something unusual is happening at the manor and apologizes for not believing her. Together, Judith and Josh secretly search Roland's room, where Judith finds a lock of hair stolen from her hairbrush. She replaces it with hair she takes from Roland's brush, and suddenly, Roland returns, forcing them to hide under his bed. After removing his shoes, Roland leaves the room without a trace, and to their shock, Judith and Josh witness Roland exiting through his window and crawling down the side of the building. They follow Roland to the oak tree, where they find him, Ruth, and Trish performing a blood ritual around a fire. 
From Roland's words, Judith and Josh discover that the trio summons a minion from the tree who drains life forces that can be transferred to them. This ritual allows them to stop aging and even revert to their younger selves for a few hours. Roland tries to sacrifice the strands of hair in a pouch to the fire, demanding the oak tree monster to prey upon Judith and transfer her energy to them. Unaware that Judith switched the locks of hair, Josh interrupts the ritual just as Roland moves to throw the hair into the fire. Josh and Judith are captured, and it's revealed that the trio and their relatives run the manor, who bring in old patients to sacrifice them. Believing he was sacrificing Judith's hair, Roland puts the hair in the fire to summon the minion to kill Judith. However, the oak monster emerges from the branches of the mythical oak tree, and takes Roland's life instead because he unknowingly sacrificed his own hair. Judith grabs a bottle of alcohol and threatens to burn the tree to ashes after the creature returns to it. Trish and Ruth promise Judith eternal life, and Roland's place in their cult, saying she would never have to face the horrors of aging and could become young again from midnight until dawn. They also lure Josh, revealing that if they joined their cult, he would never lose his grandmother, as he had lost his father. Falling prey to their emotions, Josh and Judith become part of the cult and suddenly, a Celtic sigil appears on Judith and Josh's bodies, and Judith sparkles with youthful energy. The film concludes with Judith celebrating her 70th birthday once more, remaining ageless thanks to Celtic magic. Josh joins the manor staff to stay near his grandmother and help keep her youthful by sacrificing elderly souls. The final scene shows a young Judith dancing ballet under the magical oak tree, surrounded by a cheering crowd of young people. Judith's wish to dance and be with the younger generation is ultimately fulfilled. Okay guys, that's all the recap about the manor from 2021. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next video.